Hello for gaming community and Beyblade community as a whole. We're back. We missed last week but because of BWC, but we're back today for another podcast interview. Very, 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 very special guest. Um, and I'm sorry, bro. I forgot how to pronounce your name. Is it is Himothy? Him? <laughs> Himothy Hemsworth? Is that who you are? I guess so. Uh, no, nah, he's 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 <laughs> Philip the Penguin. Timothy Hemsworth. That's who we have today for the show. Geister 99. Um, back again. I know he's up here a lot, but he is the, I, I, I will say it, like the world champion. And I know I give my viewpoints on like um, how uh, WBO were just over here pretty much in North America, just on the Western Hemisphere. But this tournament has so many people in it um, that I know we're going to dive into. And not only that, it's like the history lesson because if you listen to our show, you know how Mike got into Beyblade. Um, and it's one of my favorite stories from the jokes of the Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament of who get 2014 Beyblade World Champion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then 2023, he came back and he did it again. Another big event. And so it's like, dude, he's him. He is him. But um, yeah, so we just hopped up here. Uh wanted to ask, first off, how how y'all doing? Overall, I'm pretty I've good. Been doing all right. Good. That's solid, man. That's solid. And glad to hear you uh, hear about y'all. So two topics we've got to go over today, um, BWC, as well as we'll hop later on into the rule changes and then anything y'all want to talk about. So y'all can y'all can kick it off, man. How was y'all trip? Because I know y'all went from all the way from Maryland down to Florida. How was that um, experience like that? And then like, how was the overall journey? Your battles with Papa Bay, your battles with um, Canada or in other regions. I want to hear about Armor because I heard he was, he or she, I'm not sure, was doing pretty well. And um, yeah, yeah, y'all got it. Maryland number one. Maryland, <laughs> NC, NC. Yeah, y'all get to y'all 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 get to talk y'all junk. That's like two, yeah. <laughs> two years in a row. Yeah, I, I can't even yeah, I can't even hate on that. Two years in a row. Yeah, T T and J on uh, Dark Continent, and now at, at the yeah. World Cup. Eastern real, real, real quickly, I, I I will say I think we added it up. I think it's like seven or eight. Uh, mm. Maryland came home with seven or eight top three placings from all the different BWC events. They did. Yes. Yeah. I Maryland. have I have three. I think Alan Schaefer has one. Geetzer has one. Dragus has one. Uh, what was it? Um, Blast has two. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Blast has one and his dad has one. Yeah, I was so. saying it's his dad has the one. Yeah. Uh, but is Blast <laughs> Maryland though? Because I, I I think I think Blast is in C. I well, don't know. I think I feel like he this, plays with us more. This weekend, Blast was honorary Maryland because he stayed with us at the hotel and he's okay. been playing with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, N N C. Still shout out to N C though. We came up um, I think second in most of the events, or we were placing within most of the events. Um. Second to Maryland, not like second place, but second to Maryland. The, the, the um, only uh, the only unfair thing I can say is we can't really gauge Canada because none of them showed up. But Hen, Hen we, Wuja, we, we, we had, had we Wuja. had Hen Wuja, and that was it. So like that really decreases their chance. Like yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It, it is it is a numbers game. To be fair, we had like ten people there. We had uh, a, we had like I think ten percent of the tournament was like all people were like from Maryland or like closely like in our group. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. numbers wise, we had a good shot, but at the same time, though, you still have to know what you're doing to reach the top three with them. Yeah. Yeah. It was um. How how long was that? How long is that drive for y'all? Because I think it's twelve hours for me. Fifteen. Fifteen, right? Yeah. Okay. Fifteen, sixteen, or something. T two cars, right? Yeah, yep. we had two cars. Y'all got down there Thursday or Wednesday? We got down there Thursday. Thursday, solid, solid. Yeah, man. So how was um, Dark Horse? Dark Horseman was the first event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yes, the, yeah. that was the Friday. Yeah, and shout out to you, Mike. You got second in that, right? Yeah, I got second. What was that event like? Overall event, like. So, okay, so Dark Horseman kind of upset me because, of course, you know, it, you had to have your invite to go play and everything. Mm -hmm. And only 12 out of the 16 Dark Horsemen showed up. Yeah. Well, there was only four rounds to this tournament as a single elimination. 
four and 12 don't really go well together for four rounds. Yeah. Yeah. So what they ended up doing was most of the first seeds that were there didn't like got to buy the first round and all the second seeds had to play. Okay. Which, which sucked because that was the one format I wanted to play the most. Yeah, it was, it was the total domination format. I had a pretty spicy deck. I mean, it doesn't matter if we share it now, but uh, I was gonna go in there with like the le- the most most of the decks were all pretty much the same, but everyone had a one variation combo. Mine was gonna be barricade because me and Geetster we t- we tested it the night before. It had a super great matchup against anything that was been because it was on Zone Z and the rubber just lets it sp- st- uh, spin steal, mm-hmm. and then it was super good if anyone was playing guilty to just stop them. Mm. It, um so shoot i did, definitely I, I was listening and then it, my question just left my head um you said it was 12 people four rounds oh what was the format total domination so what, ba- what is, yeah. so basically we would have had to make five beyblade no repeating <laughs> parts and no driver variations then we would show our decks to each other me and my opponent We'd look at them. We then choose one Beyblade from our opponent's deck, and it's banned. They cannot play it. Oh, okay. Then after they can't play, then after we choose which ones we can't play, in secret we would choose one, you know, like a you know WBO deck style. And you know, after you reveal, you do any mode changes and you battle. Whoever wins, the Beyblade that they won with gets banned. They can't use it again for the rest of the format for the rest of the match. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. So then you had to win three points with all of the Beyblade. With uh, well, you had to win three points by the end of it with with losing your Beyblade. So the strategy yeah. the strategy of the game is basically you pin them into a corner to where they're stuck with one Beyblade that can't beat any of your Beyblade. But unfortunately, yeah. in this format, you actually end up with two Beyblades, and that makes it harder. Yeah. So. Yeah, it seems very like skill intensive and tactical, but it does sound fun. It does oh, sound no, like it, it's super fun. But yeah, definitely yeah. it's definitely something you can't run with like kids and stuff. It had to be like something like a dark horseman where you like everyone actually knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It the the only the only gripe about it is it definitely probably should have been only make four Beyblades and then win with three Beyblades. Mm-hmm. Because you know the strategy of the game, like we said, is to pin them into that one Beyblade. Yeah, like that—that that is literally the strategy. You cor- you corner them to where you know they get like the first two points, you know. But they're two they're two like good Beyblades that you know that you know could be an issue. They win with them, and then the third Beyblade that you know they can't win with because all your Beyblades counter it. You just win. Okay. Like that's the strategy. Yeah. So yeah, you just want to knock them out to the point to where they have no they have no comeback. So you're you're playing pretty much for the the mid to late game, right? Of yeah. of, the, of the deck, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's a that's that sounds solid solid strategy. Who who all was there? I know Fireblader was there. North Carolina was there. Um, of course, y'all were there. Armor from New Jersey. So and... it was it was me and Broyito from Maryland. Armor mm-hmm. and Sniper from New Jersey, Triple Dash and Lionheart from was Ohio. it Indiana? Ohio. Oh, yeah. Um then there was Zector from Washington, Zeluk and Blader Shane from um Florida. Uh Fireblader from North Carolina, and then who were the last two? Uh, the Texas. Yes, Texas the, the, the two te- uh, Blader Union and Troy Mod. Troy Mod. There we go. That was all twelve. Okay. All right. All right. So you made it. You made it. You was in uh, second. How was your? How was that? Um, top cut match. Uh, so, so after they did the first round with the total domination with all the second seeds, mm-hmm. I then had to play triple dash. Um, and we had to play. WBBA 5G, but in the standard stadium. Uh, I think right off the gate, we both put the orders up, and it was my win versus his dynamite on BDR. I got that win. Uh, and then the next one, I think it was his world against my dynamite on high extend plus. And oh. he, he got the win. 
and then it was my world against something of his, and we got a draw. And then the next one was our guilties versus guilty, and um, I launched in and I KO'd him, so I got two points. So that was three points, and it was over. Solid. I was confused because I thought y'all were playing that uh, total domination the whole time. My bad. I think I remember now it was total yeah. domination that first round. Yeah, I could see the frustration with that because you wanted to be able to do that. That would have been the most fun um, yeah. with all 16 there. So you, total domination to 5G. Okay, I got yep. you. And then um, after that, it was um, WBO Deck, who I then uh, had to play against Lionheart. So I played father and son right in a row. Yeah, yeah. And um, I beat him. I beat him 5-0 with just wind. I didn't change at all. Okay. All right. And then um, how did the armor match go? Because that was, that was your next match, right? Yeah, that, that one was single bay, um, which is a little weird and unfortunate. Like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about, like, the main match at the end being just single bay. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you just, if you just pick wrong. It's still, yeah. Uh, yeah, if if you just pick wrong, it's an issue. Uh, yeah. But I end, I ended up losing three zero. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he just he had a really interesting like it was dynamite versus uh win both with BDR, and he mm -hmm. just had a really interesting like launch style that was making me like get pushed out of the center and yeah. catch the ridge and then just spin out. So it happens, so you know. I, I just yeah. got I, like I said the 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 single bay was just. It was upsetting, but it is what it is. Yeah, it it happens. I I, I do know, or I have grown to appreciate their their the skill in it, and I think it's from like talking to the older bladers. Like, um, I know you're younger than us, Geister, but you've been doing this so much longer than us. Yeah. Uh, and and so it's like you, TSO, um, just like really like the metal fight players that that grew up with the single bay and uh i know a lot of it is just knowing your opponent and knowing their play style but also it is when you have those unique single bay blades um that you can hopefully do work with and and sometimes it, it, it gets it in um that's solid because i i haven't uh i don't think i've ever met armor before i think the only jersey well i know a lot of jersey bladers um but i don't think i've met armor before um so it was solid and um coming down there and, and he did his thing and all y'all y'all did y'all think you made you made it a top cut um in the best of the best from each region. So that's solid. Um yeah, did you have anything more on that on Friday night? Uh I I just watched all night. I mean it was fun. Like, it was fun to watch. Mm hmm Like I, I definitely hope that they do something like this again for like something bigger. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just nice to have something to do on the Friday. Because most people are going to be there anyway, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just checking it out. Um, solid, solid. So, Saturday. How was Saturday? I know that was... How many events was it? Because um, I was a little bummed out that they didn't stream it. Um, I was trying to... I was... I mean... You were was, watching that challenge bracket like a hawk, dude. <laughs> I was, I was. You look at our Instagram. I was, I was up there. I um, I was, I was at work that weekend, but uh, I did my thing, and yeah, I was watching challenge heavily uh while I could to see like who was advancing, posting it up there. Saw all like pretty much all the matchups. I put up um, oh Mike, how many times? What other event did you play Papa Bay in? Hello. Mikey, Yo. Yeah. So, sorry, I had to run out that opening gate for my wife. Oh, okay. My bad. If my bad, I didn't hear you. Um, if you. No, you said, I didn't. I, I didn't say anything. I just ran out real quick. <laughs> okay, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so we just we hopping into Saturday, um, and uh, Geister was like, uh, Jared was like, I was watching Challenge like a hawk, which I was. Um trying to stay updated i was actually it was me and um jc like communicating or uh back and forth uh on what's going on asking for the challenge link so every little detail that you were able to send me it was much appreciated um so 
it was it was a lot of fun but yeah i was i was bummed out that they didn't stream it but still we got some experience from getting to talk with y'all and and seeing the challenge um yeah so how many events did go on saturday uh i do and, and yeah yeah in total i think it was five it was the main event it was king of the hill they had like the two events for like the younger kids and then they had both of the meta masters events all on the same day and the power rounds oh yeah and the power rounds yeah i thought the power rounds were in on sunday finals were on sunday what what were the power like how did you get what was that how did you get in it basically all it was was if um depending on when you got knocked out of the tournament of the main event you Mm -hmm. were placed into like a bracket of the power rounds to play to basically to keep playing and this is like this is where (sighs) okay i want to quickly say Mm -hmm. bwc was an amazing event like Mm -hmm. honestly there, there there were a little bit of uh there's things that I would have done differently, mm-hmm. but I'm not saying the way Conte did things was wrong. Yeah. So yeah. like I, I I just want people to understand that I'm not I'm not saying Conte was wrong. I'm just saying there are different that in my eyes there are different ways to do it. Which initially when we had talked with Conte, if you remember my idea for BWC the main event would have been to if you had more than 64 people, you divide it into two tournaments and keep it Swiss so everyone could keep playing all day. Yeah. That was- oh, yeah, yeah. I think I know. I, <clears throat> I'm not like um, copywriting events, but I mean, copywriting the idea. But yeah, I had thought, I had thought of that too. Cause if you have a whole lot, you don't have to do single elimination. If you have enough judges, you can run multiple tournaments. Like you can even do four tournaments and then like the top cut from those tournaments. I was a separate tournament the next day that is pretty much just like the best of the best from each group. Exactly. Um, that that yeah. was that was my initial way of thinking the tournament should be done. And I I think after this event, I'm even more like in agreement that, that yeah, that that's how it should be done. Because in all reality, like for Jared, it really sucked because you know, he he was still in the main event. But once you once you then like switch it up, and now you're having beat up like the power rounds happen. You have to take judges from the uh, main event to have them doing these power rounds. So then the main event can't keep progressing forward fast enough. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Um, and challenge. Even though I, like I wasn't there to physically see it, I was like like you said, Jared. I was um I was watching it like a hawk. So I know I knew when to switch back and forth between challenges when I would see a match go on. And then it's like, okay, they're not going to have another one for a second. Um, I'm, let me go back to the other one because I figured out what was going on. Like either people were um, helping their buddies out with the combos so they were running back and forth or judges were being taken away or people were uh, sharing parts or whatever. Um, and I figured that I only got confused when I didn't see the end of King of the Hill and I was like, dang, man, what happened? But um, um, appreciate y'all with the text. But yeah, so the power rounds were if you. Yeah, they, they, they were they were for if you scrubbed out early enough, basically. OK. You know, All like right. me. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When I saw that, I was I was surprised, man. It, it, it was like a, a movie scene popped in my head, but I don't know if y'all have ever seen it. It's Big Trouble in Little China. You ever seen that? No, no. No, there's a scene. Uh, they ru- they like were hyped up. They were going to like pretty much wo- war with like this um, it's like this underworld type thing. And one of the main characters, he's like, yeah, he's ready. And they run in, um, and they get into the entrance way. And he has like a, I don't know, he has like a like a Mac ten or something like that, like automatic gun. And he shoots it up in the air like, oh, let's go, boom, 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 boom. And he shoots like these rocks, and they fall and knock him out. So it's kind of like a, um, it's like an action comedy, and I thought that because I know you was like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, and then, yeah, you were, um, you were out early. I was surprised in that, um, but you had some, you did have some tough matchups early, or I believe you that, did. Yes, that that was the, that was basically the big issue with it, with that, um, because he had people show up from different countries, he decided to randomize the seating because those players would probably be better 
than a lot of the players that were there, mm-hmm. which I, I I understand. But at the same time, a lot of those players that were from other countries didn't really make it super far either. And that's probably because they're playing in a WBO format, not yeah. WBBA. So in my opinion, their skill level is probably that of a new WBO player anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who was your first match? I can't. I know you went against Hen Wuja second. Who was uh, your first Ray, match? Ray Buster. He's actually a really good player, but in all reality, I lost because I psyched myself out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's pick three, choose one. And I walked up and literally we're, he's playing the Maryland deck, you know, mm-hmm. just like 90% of the players there were, they're all playing the Maryland deck. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, this man watched me play yesterday and watched me rely on win. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking he's going to go five brain and just go into world. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I decided to go guilty. But then he actually picked his dynamite, and so I just outplayed myself. A yeah. little, a little, la- a little later, we went off to the side, and we tried his dynamite against my wind. It, I, I would have won without an issue. Yeah. So yeah. that that was not like I, I probably shouldn't have did that because then it just got me even more like pissed off with myself. <laughs> but yeah. it'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like that, and then um. So that was where 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 is he or she from? They're from Texas. 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 Okay. Sh- sh- yo, shout out to Texas. Like they have gotten really good. Yeah. Yeah. They've been playing a lot. Yeah. Like so. Yeah. That's like Brian. I, mean, I, can't say, I don't know how they used to play. I'd never play with them, but I think well, y'all played with them at the um, Bladers Kingdom. Yeah. We Brian Nessa and um, Zesty Fresh were there, and like shout out to them for really like picking up their scene and getting their scene really going. Oh, that hundred percent. And then I know I I want to talk about this. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but I know that because I was surprised, and I know from talking with Alan and now with your experience because we do have um attack, and I want to shout you out too, Jared. I put up on the Instagram like I had my little like tags just from the people that I knew and yeah. what I considered y'all's blader style being. Um, I just kind of made that up, but it was something fun, I guess, for me to do because I wasn't able to be there. Um, put you as balanced because I learned a lot of my tactics and skill for attack um, from just the things you've told me. Um, but I also know you're good with stamina, like you're well-rounded. And I put Fireblader also there as balanced because his attack game has come up so much like he 5-0'd me the last tournament um uh in in deck finals like he he really started playing really well with uh attack uh dragus is is dragus right that's how you like, pronounce i think it's dragus is like dragus yeah. okay um my bad i i did put you a stamina up but that was just an assumption and um it it was just an assumption. I don't know if you play attack or not, so I apologize if you if you play different. He he's better with stam. I, I would say he's better with stamina than attack. Yes. Okay, solid. So I I did do that right. I know Broyito plays attack, um, hundred yeah. percent. And um, yeah, that's what I had. So I was putting that up there, and I for kind of lost my train of thought on why I was bringing that up. Oh yeah, because we I used to always think. And this was fault on me that because Canada only played attack and only playing with each other, that their attack, because what I've dealt with, you know, um, I feel like I can usually decently fend, defend against attack or like do okay with it. But for them to come to this big event and then when he played you and um, he still won in the way that he won, uh, him Wuja did, um, it was it was intriguing to see. So I did want to shout it out and say respect for for that attack matchup, because I know there's a lot that goes into that um, in both ways. And it is, you said it was pick three, choose one through the whole yep. single, for the, for the whole uh, first stage, right? Yep. Yeah. It was, it was that for the whole, until top eight was like figured out, it was double LM. So, yeah. okay. Or not, it was, not, it was pick three, choose one. Yeah. yeah. For the whole double elimination bracket until there was eight people left, it was um, pick three. Solid. Yeah, and I wanted to I did want to shout that out um because I know Alan said he was really good. And then when he played against you, um 
he he did well with his uh with his guilty. What what were you running? I don't think I asked you that when you played uh him Luja. Me? Yeah. Oh um I, I, I went back though I I chose my win, he was playing guilty, and he just quickly three owed me. He just his his attack launch was on point. Mm -hmm. Um at the same time they're like that was a match that was really stressing me out. Not because I had to play Henwuja, it was because of when I had to play Henwuja. Yeah, just like right, like, right at the right at the beginning. Right, like because yeah. in all reality, seat like regular seating wise, I should never have seen Henwuja until like finals. Yeah, like yeah. because he's right, he's the right next person, and that that was one of the other things that I was saying about um the Swiss uh making it Swiss instead of double elimination, like because then. You could have kept it Swiss, and you just start playing people based on record, not so much as seeding afterwards. Yeah. Like, because with double elimination, everything is based off of that seeding. Because mm -hmm. that, that seeding, like, makes it a line straight down, and those people are going to merge against eventually. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask this, because I was seeing, like I said, just from the challenge, and I know I talked to Jared, and he said, like, every match was tough. And after you told me that, when I looked at the brackets and everyone that I knew and who they were going against, like there were some names that I didn't know from various regions, but I don't think I ever, I didn't like, I remember looking at Fireblader and I was like, dang, man, he's got to go against this person and that person or looking at, um, also shout out to, uh, Spike Storm because he did really well. And I was really proud of him, um, for getting through, but was there like, I know there's going to be new players, but was there any like easy matchups? Because Jared, did you said you didn't have any? Well, shoot, uh, I don't like, want to make y'all like call anybody out or no, be no, like, no, no, no. this dude was a scrub. But none of mine were easy. <laughs> yeah, none of yeah. mine were easy. There was there was a lot of people when like just talking to people around the event. They were like, "This is my first time playing." I'm like, mm -hmm. "It's a hell of a first event." But so there there was definitely new people, but um. No, I don't. I just don't know how it was the way it worked out or not. But well, I I think because most of like the little kids played in Genesis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of them ended up playing Genesis. Okay. So like, so like normally when you go to a big Beyblade tournament and you have all of these like you know little kids that are brand new and you're getting paired up against them, like that's the first couple round easy matches you get. But we didn't have that because all of the good players like because that's the thing anyone that was coming to this event especially from out of state they weren't here to play around yeah they yeah. they weren't just showing up just to play you know that this is this wasn't a local to them this was the national event and i think that was one of the best things about it like that's one of the things that I definitely Kanse did correct like having the genesis tournament for the little kids and then having the main event for you know whoever wanted to enter most of the little kids was just like well i don't want to play against the big adults so i'm playing here I think yeah. like I think like um what is it Bay Caddy's dad or Bay Caddy's son? Yeah, Spike Storm. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Spike Storm. He played he, he played he played in both, you know. But he's a he's a very confident, you know, young kid. Yeah, yeah, I um, like that little guy. Yeah, so he he knows. Like I think he was like probably the youngest person in the main event. Mm -hmm. I was I was just about to I bring so. that up because he was he was young. Um, Fireblader's. Young, he's a teenager, but he's he's definitely older than Spike Storm. Spike oh, Storm's oh, like no, 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 Jay Shindra. Jay Shindra was the other one. Oh, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He also is confident enough when playing against adults. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's fine. Like, there are some kids that are just really good at the game and they can keep up with even the adults that play that are good with it. Yeah, because I think, I think, um, Mike, you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Jerry, you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I think my phone like cut out for a second. But yeah, I remember um because yeah, I remember watching them and I man, I was so proud. And shout y'all both out now. Um, I haven't talked to either one. I sent Fireblader a text. Um, I don't know if he was bummed or whatever, but um for them to go eight and oh that first day and still make it in the top four uh the next day, like I'm very proud of y'all. If you're listening to this, very proud, super proud. Um, very proud and happy for you, Bay Caddy, because I know it's a good dad moment and dad feeling. Um, to get them go the um to see your son like go through that, especially like what y'all are saying with adults, high intensity. Cause like I said, looking at the matches, seeing 
Papa Bay, seeing Crisis Crusher, seeing Geister 99, um, Zector, Garishi. Shout out to Garishi. He was there. Um, uh, the Jersey Bladers, Sniper, Alan Schaefer from Maryland, and just so many people, uh, Texas. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot to take in. And to get through that was, I mean, it's a big mental game, big mental hump. And like you said, like none of your matches were easy, Jared. So I imagine no one's, no one had like, oh, this is a freebie um, type of time. So that was solid. And, 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 and kudos to them for um, putting it in. Did I say about Papa Bay too? I can't remember. Papa Bay was there. And um, yeah, that's solid. Um, so I wanted to ask to when did, um, and this is for you, Mike, and I'm going to ask you, Jared, after this uh, about your experience, but when did you play Papa Bay before? What? Because you said you, you beat him one time and you lost to him one time. What other format did y'all play? Uh, I I played him in the same spin ruler format, um, okay. and, and I beat him there. So uh, we both had to pick a left Beyblade. Um, mine was Burst of Bahamut on Metal Bearing Drift. And his was, I think, vanish on bearing drift, and yeah. just and just I I I just won the same spin match. Um, and then we played in the quarterfinals of the power round, or the semifinals of the power round, and um, he beat me there. Um, with his his dynamite on metal BDR. Okay, was that single bay in power rounds? No, it was it was three on three. It was three on oh, three. Okay. Yeah. But but because we had the reshuffle, um, th the last point he got was the second time on the metal bearing. Drink. Solid, solid. And I was hyping that up. I don't know if it went on my Facebook story, but I was definitely. I put up like two polls. I put up a poll a, a while ago for y'all's match, and then a poll that same day. Um, so it was it was good. I was I was glad y'all got to to battle it out. Uh, in the actual. Yeah, event. yeah. We 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 wanted to have our little event but we weren't able to just there was no time yeah i figured that like because when as i was talking to y'all um and thank y'all for talking to me because i know y'all are busy um it just seemed like a, a lot was going on but in a good way you know there was there was everyone was entertained and everything everyone had something going on so i I figured at that point in time you probably didn't have time for a side event and shout out um to conch too because he did it is tough to run those big events um the money that's involved but also the time and you want to make sure everyone trying to make sure everyone's happy no one's like bummed out and um enjoying the experience and from what i've heard uh, i think he did a good good job on that um so shout out to him um so jerry how was your experience with king of the hill mr Hemothy? just in general <laughs> yeah I well mean... yeah or and how was your how were your matches because i know you said they were tough but I mean, matches, like, I, I like, the entire day, or entire weekend, I did not switch off the win combo until they forced me to, which was a random round that was 5G in top cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I literally picked this win combo all weekend. It's, yeah. It did what it's supposed to do. I mean, the combos is super good. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, no, like, I, there was a couple times where I'm like, eh, maybe I should switch, and I just like, nah, never mind, I'm just gonna use what's been working. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. You played Papa um, Bay too, didn't you? Yeah, I played him. I played it. It was like my second round. I think it was like round three of the actual bracket mm -hmm. we played. So those pick three, choose one. He had, I think he had triple drift. He had one BDR and two like regular. He had metal drift and then drift. And then I, I almost picked guilty there. And then I was like, nah, I'll just pick the, I'll just pick my win BDR. I'm like, if he picks his, uh, left and drift, I think I can win anyway. And that's what he did too. But he was mm -hmm. on like he was on Vanish instead of World, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't I don't really like Vanish on Drift and stuff like that. So yeah, I, like in like the first the first point, like I I lost by a mile. I'm like I'm picked wrong here. <laughs> I was like <laughs> I'm losing this one. It was so bad. And then but then like the next yeah. point, I won that way. I'm like okay, well maybe not. And then I won yeah. the next two. I'm like all okay. right. Okay. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I was like, instant, man, instant I, had a, regret. I had a couple matches that way where I was like, I picked one thing, I lose like the first round. I'm like, man, this is bad. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. 
because I think the round after I took my first loss was against uh, Cow Lee from Texas, and mm-hmm. it was like it was three two. We played a right spin BDR mirror, and he he like edged me out in the end. And then okay. my first round in losers bracket, I played against uh, Troy Mod, and I wasn't even like thinking. So so funny. Cow Lee comes up like later when I'm sitting around waiting for the next round to start or whenever for me to get called. He goes. What did you use against me? I told him like, oh, I picked I picked Win BDR. He goes, where were the other two? And I I sat I sat there and thought about like that's a very strange question to ask. And I'm like, I don't know if he's trying to like, yeah. put, like a blog together or like a video and just wanted to know. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I'll just tell him. Oh. Man, man, did he go to Troy Mod as fast as he possibly <laughs> could after I told him, like, oh, man, I really did yeah. that, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. That's wild. Yeah, that's wild. So yeah. then it was literally, like, five minutes later, we get called up. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks, yeah. I, I know people, like, do that, but usually, like, um, like you'll know who, who, who does it. I guess that's the difference in – yeah, this big like a big event like this with people that you've never met before. Yeah, I just didn't know where they were all all were from. So yeah. like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so like, oh yeah, yeah. What? T- tell me your strategy and your deck. Oh, so this is what I did. This and that. It's like, cool, bro. Thanks. It, and then they go up, it, it ended up working out because I think they overthought it. And um, when we actually got to the stadium, I remember looking at his three combos. Troy Mod has the exact he literally, I guess Cowley just handed him the dynamite combo I just lost to. I'm mm-hmm. like, did you just take that from him? He goes, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had no I'm, shame. I'm Dang. like I'm sitting there, I'm like, maybe I should just pick world. I'm like, I wonder if he's gonna try to pick it. And I'm yeah. like I'm, and then I'm like, no, I'll just pick the wind. It was three two, it was close enough. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll just I'll just put my uh my tournament hopes on this thing. And he yeah. picked guilty, so I picked right. I was like, man. And, and then yeah. he was up on me too. Oh, I'm like, man, I just got, I got one, two, and I was pretty hype, and I just got <laughs> bounced. <laughs> I'm like, this is bad. Yeah, yeah. Dang, man. So yeah, yeah, that would have stressed me out. Where, Mike, were you there? Were you with him? Or Mike was judging that one. Yeah, I was judging. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So I was like, yeah, because it's like, man, the team, the squad should have been there. Like. Jared, no, don't say anything. Like, oh no, but it's it's all good. Sometimes that happens, man. Sometimes you like I said, I think it worked out because they ended up picking guilty. And like he had two really good launches, and then like he self-KO'd on one, and then my win just stayed in for the other two. Yeah. So like in the end, it made me pick better, I think. I don't know if I would have psyched myself out if I would have saw that same combo there again, but like mm-hmm. I said, it was a close match anyway, so I I was like confident enough where I could win the matchup because it was three to two. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a side note because I know like I'm not a fan of when I talk about like the scouting at big tournaments or any tournament. That was when back when we were playing single bay and like adults or older like teenagers or whatever would watch the little kid to see what they had and then like hard counter them. Um, I was never a fan of that. Um, but I do understand, like, if people are just giving um, Titus away, because I just got, I'm getting back into trading card games now and seeing this life again, because I haven't since I was like in the seventh grade um, when I was a lot younger. So, but not seventh, eighth grade, eighth grade. And um, just seeing like the the tactics people use, you know, to try to find out like what you're using, what you're running, like it's so heavy because I've just been doing Beyblade so long and like our community here, hmm. it's a little bit smaller. So, you know, it's not as much um, of the scouting going on or like the card countering or anything. But now getting back into trading card games, I'm seeing it again. Then thinking about this big tournament and just like, do you, um, you, you, you don't know who's who, like it's like sharks in the water. You don't know who's coming at any time. Um, but yeah, man, I'm glad that you won that because I would have been. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I would have been a little bit upset if if that happened and then they like they worked together to to, to take you out like that. It, I would have been like, dang, man. Um, but I'm I'm glad that you won 100. percent And uh, so what was your? So you went through. Who else was in the um in that bottom bracket with you? I played against. So I played against Troy Mod in the Losers, and then I played against Jay Shindra, and then I played against Ray Buster, who was the one that knocked Crisis out. I looked at the bracket like 
when I wrote up my tournament report for Ray Buster, he literally only played against people from Maryland the entire <laughs> the entire King of the Hill bracket. Dang. Dang. And, he and he knocked out Texas, most of them. Right? Yeah, he's from Texas. He pushed a bunch of people to the loser's bracket. Mm-hmm. The only two that he didn't beat were the two that made top eight because he lost to Brigido for his winning in match there and then lost to me for the same thing. Okay. Okay. But like he he like beat Dragreus earlier. Um, I think he he played against Crisis. I don't remember the last one he played against. It might have been Allen. I um, think it was Allen. Was it Allen? I think so. Yeah, it was. So yeah, he he literally only played against Maryland the entire day. Yeah, he was he he came hard too. It seems like. Oh. Yeah, I mean he almost got, he almost made it in. Like I said, he had two winning in matches and he just lost them both. But, but see I that. Mean, that that's one of the things that I'm saying where like the seeding really was yeah what messed that kind of stuff up because that shouldn't have happened. Yeah. What what you mean? The With... the seed the the seeding was just randomized. It wasn't like there was no WBO rank being involved in it. Yeah. So but that I was... that messes with the people you're actually like supposed to play against. Yeah. I um. I remember, and the only reason I'm thinking of this because when I tried to run my uh, the FGC events, and I remember I went up there for it, and Top Cut was still like all the 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 people w- within high rank. Um, they were still the ones within um, within the Top Cut, or like who would have been there. Um, so I get I. I understand why he did it because it, it, it may like to try to do the balance, especially if everyone there had um like legitimate skill, like decent to legitimate skill. But I also understand what you're saying on as far as the matchups that you should have had. Um it's tough though. It's it's a it's a tough call to make. Um, especially with everyone's just so many people there. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 like I'm saying, like I, I'm not saying like what Conti did was wrong. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just saying like, you know that 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 seating is the reason why the matchups were done the way they were. Why like I played Hen Wuja, you know, round two. Yeah. Yeah. It you was. Know, when, you know, no, normally, yeah. normally it wouldn't have happened. Hmm. Hundred percent. Um. So you went. So did any other events go on on Saturday that y'all were in? I know you said you said the opposite or the same spin. It seems to been in the top rubber one. Yeah, top rubber and same spin ruler. Did y'all play in top rubber? Yeah, we played in everything that we could have. <laughs> oh, you did. Solid, solid. How was top? What was how was top rubber? Top rubber. There was like a very small list of like rubber attack drivers you could pick from. And then you could only use those on your Beyblades. You couldn't use anything else. You can use like any other layer or whatever. But top, um, top rubber for me was I walked up with Guilty and launched it, and then walked over because I didn't want to play it. <laughs> um, you said, oh, you you went up and then you left. L- like like I, I went up to play my opponent. I didn't even build a combo. I just walked up with my stock, my normal Guilty that I normally have, and I just mm-hmm. launched it and quickly lost. I already told the guys like even before I went up for my match, I was like I'm not I'm not in the mood mood to play this because I just got done judging the power rounds, mm-hmm. and I was like I need a break, so I just walked up and launched and lost and went went back and sat down. I hear you. I hear you. The actual meta for that format was like weird. <laughs> what what like, were people running? There was like the the main thing that the, at the beginning of the event was like people running wind on like exceed dash to mm-hmm. beat everyone picking guilty mm-hmm. and then the the counter to that was a run like burst on explosion so it was just like so much weird stuff just getting used <laughs> yeah yeah but, i mean that's the point of it so yeah it sounded it sounds it sounds um intriguing what what one overall what combo i don't even remember i don't i wasn't like paying attention too much because like by then i was starting to put myself together for like the same spin one like once okay. i got because they're all single elimination so once you lost once you're out so I was like, all right, well, let me just start building this over the other one. Okay. Okay. Well, that's solid that they had. Um, that was a, that's another thing that, well, that, that, that I think was decent that um, you had a lot going on. You didn't just have yeah. that. Um, 
I mean, downtime is good, but you didn't have downtime to where it's like, man, I'm just sitting around here. I don't like I'm bored. I, you know, so that was solid. That was solid in the least. Um, the, the whole thing with the downtime was like an issue at the beginning, like when there were so many people still in. Mm-hmm. I was playing like around an hour until I lost. <laughs> like right, my first yeah. three rounds were like at least I think it was over three hours between them, like in total of me just sitting Ooh. around. Yeah, that is a minute. Was, like, he would play the winner's bracket, and then he would run the entire loser's bracket before we went back into the winners again. I'm Before thinking King of the Hill? Even... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that, too. Which, on my uh, that, that, that reasoning is why I'm saying, like, the splitting the thing and having the two Swiss um, tournaments would have just been the best way to do it. Yeah. Because then you have, like, zero downtime. You can just keep rolling. How many judges did y'all have all together? I, don't I mean, how many he had? I wasn't that, like counting. There was like, there was like eight regular judges, and then like you know, like I I didn't sign up to be a judge. I just told him, you know, if they needed help, I'd hop in and help. Yeah. And so then I started helping and whatnot. But that that's one of the other parts that I'm saying too. Like you know, like like when we did Dark Horseman or Dark Continent, mm-hmm. you know, we were able to you know just situate okay two people are going to judge here two people are going to judge here two people here two people here and then you roll through it Mm -hmm. you know and like we potentially could have done that also here you know if because because if we could have done it where there was a total of six stadiums Mm -hmm. three three for um tournament a and three for tournament b b and then if we could have had 12 people judging and just rotate them so that way then you could just keep it rolling yeah, I I think the tournament would have went by really fast and really smoothly. Yeah, I said I had asked about the judges because like yeah the the same um concept or idea you have like I've I've definitely thought of that like if you run four tournaments and you have like because y'all had enough people y'all had probably hella hella organizers there too um everyone's just organizing I mean overall you have a main organizer. But you'll have someone that has organizer or, or host the event before, and then they have their set of judges, and then they go over to their group, and then they play within their group. And each, it's like everyone's at a Swiss, um, but it's a big Swiss event. And then the top four or the top eight, however he wanted to do it, or the organizer wanted to do it, will have a finals the next day, which will also be a Swiss, but it's again, you're playing against the best people at the event. Um, and I think, it, yeah, it, it definitely could have worked out if he had eight main judges and then everybody and their mama there from, because I'm pretty sure everyone that was even in King of the Hill or majority of them had probably judged the match before. Garishi's an organizer, you're an organizer. Geister's, are you an organizer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're an organizer. Sniper's an organizer. Allen, I think, is an organizer. Dragus is an organizer. Um, Five Bladers, huh? Kirito, he's an organizer. Kirito is an organizer. Um, Firebladers been playing forever. He could judge. Um, Spike Storm same way. Bay Caddy same way. There's so, way. There was like more, way more than enough. Like, yeah. They, if they wanted to judge, they could have. Like, honestly, though, I don't think I would have like volunteered to judge a single match for that weekend. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't think I would have won the tournament if I was also judging. Yeah, because judging does take out of you. I've noticed that a lot. Um, excuse me. And organizing too. Uh, shout out to you, Mike, because I don't know how you do it. Like I know you come out with um, you won a lot of your events, um, but I know when I, I'm not. I'm not as huh. While also organizing it. Yeah, while also organizing, and um, and or judging, and it's like I know when I do that is I'm just I don't uh, know maybe because I'm frantic or whatever. But granted, uh, I only I typically only have like two judges. Um, Honestly, a hundred percent. The reason why I can do it so much is because of the people I have supporting me to to do it. Yeah, it's all good. Like, well, I I know we'll get there, but I know like, um, just right now, I'm actually enjoying more making sure that uh the kids that come and and the adults um are able to enjoy it. I've kind of I've I'm gonna say I've I've given up on on trying to um i don't know be like one of the top or one of the best but it's like now i'm I'm more focused on organizing i'm actually having more yeah, fun yeah. doing that than, than i have been playing lately um 
but that 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 is what it is. So that was Saturday. What 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 went down on Sunday? So Sunday was finals of King of the Hill, finals of Power Rounds, and then I think there was a Genesis Titans event, which was like all like I think it was four through twelve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like they had the two separate Genesis events. One was four through seven, and the other one was eight through twelve. And then mm-hmm. I guess it was just like both of those. Who is this? Um. Hello. Like they they just ran them all together. I'll edit that out. All right, that person. I don't know how to. Y'all know how to kick people out? I just mute them. Time them out. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, I wasn't fast enough. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I just won't put it into the recording. Um, even if I don't edit this part out, somebody just popped up here. Um, being yeah. am- immature, but it's all good. Uh, go ahead. My bad. Um, so that was there was like the kids event, and then, um, so it's finals that, and then we had. The Iron Blader tournament was the last one. Okay. Iron Blader. Um, Iron Blader. And the mentor. The mentor. Oh, what, yeah, the mentor yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What went down with that? Um, the mentor one. That was like the the parents tournament that they ran. Okay. So, um, so it was like the parent plus like the um whoever they were with could just uh. They could just um help each other play, and there was like a single limb bracket. Okay, okay, <laughs> solid, solid. So how were uh did you? Yeah, Mike, you played the power rounds on Sunday. Did you play anything else on Sunday? Uh, what were the other tournaments on Sunday? It was just Iron Blader. Iron wasn't Blader. It? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was just Iron Blader was the only <laughs> other thing. So you just we just kind of got to play that all day. Okay. Um, and that was that was kind of fun. What did it what did that consist of? Like what was the format on some The first two rounds was WBBA 5G in the DB stadium. Mm-hmm. Um and then after that the next one was called Tag Me. And that one was kind of like WBO deck but instead of three Beyblades you only had two and one had to have an attack driver. Mm. So okay. it was it was different. Uh, and then the fourth round was 3v3v3, which was where um, you made three Beyblades, no repeating parts. But, you know, once you made your order, one, two, and three, they each, they played in a different stadium. Like, no, Beyblade number one played in Standard Stadium. Beyblade number two played in DB. And Beyblade number three played in the DX. Mm-hmm. So you had to, like, make stuff based on those stadiums, too. And I think... um. In both of those, in the tag me and in the um, 3v3v3, there was no variant of drift allowed. Okay. Okay. So that had the bands. It sounds it sound interesting. Um, it, was, it was interesting. I mean, it was, it was pretty fun. Deck building for them was tough. Especially for the, the, the last one, the 3v3v3, there was no dash drivers allowed. Mm. Also, also, so I, I'm I'm gonna quickly say this. Um, for people that have been in the WBO for a while, we you know we all have not played like 5G, but I will say this much here: 5G, and if you also incorporate it in like the standard stadium, not just the DB stadium, with a driver variation rule, it gets hard. Yeah. It gets really hard to choose what you're going to use. Mm-hmm. I like, could I, I could definitely see that because like like even with like one BDR and one drift, you still have to make five other combos. And then like when you have um KOs being worth two points because it's you know five G, and mm-hmm. even if it's in the standard stadium, if you use like a rubber flag, you can risk self KOing and losing the match for it. So mm-hmm. you have to really be good with attack or. You've got to use other stuff, but still have the possibility of getting KO'd. It mm-hmm. gets really hard to choose what your combos are going to be when you have to spread your resources out that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I could um, 
I can see that. Yeah, I think I think we we definitely hit on that uh cuz you got to think about like what you can use cuz WBBA doesn't have the driver variant rule, right? No, they don't. Yeah. Cuz it's like it would be tough. It would be tough if you start using something like well you wouldn't be using kick, but I can see it coming out. Um that's solid though. At least we got with that. Um how were the finals overall with um uh let's 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 hit up the power rounds i guess first like what was your experience with that and was that still was it still pick three choose one or was it deck with that format the the power rounds the entire way through the finals and everything was all three on three okay all right my bad if you said that earlier i forgot no i didn't all right um um so I, i i will say this much here uh the power rounds for me were relatively easy up until Papa Bay because I owned both bearing drift and metal bearing drift. Mm -hmm. So it was relatively easy because I could just have the best two combos in the game at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So like, I, I, I will give a big like amount tribute to just being able to play that. Um, I, I'm not saying that like I wouldn't still have done fine without it, but I'm saying that that just made it easier for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had I had to play triple dash again. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's all. <laughs> uh, we 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 had to play the first um part of the power round finals, and I beat him. You know, double bearing drift was too good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like yeah. I, I I destroyed this man and his dad. I, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. What did he have? Just standard stuff, you know. Okay. Um, BDR. Um, I think he had guilty, and uh, I don't remember what his last combo was on. I oh no no. I think his last combo might have been um, what is it? Burst on bearing Mobius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like that combo. Like there. I will, I will give this. I definitely underestimated the burst layer before this weekend. Yeah, because you said you used it for. Same or did you? Oh, were you just seeing it in a lot of like heavy gameplay? I was seeing it having a lot of heavy gameplay, and me and Geetster both kind of like we're talking about it. And we're like, did we underestimate burst? Yeah. Like I, I, I don't think we underestimated in opposite spin. I still think it's pretty bad in opposite, and I just think world is much better than it. Yeah. But I think, like, same spin-wise, I think it's actually the best same spin left um, option. Yeah, I was thinking that because I can't remember which one of you were talking to me, and I think it might have been you, Jared, when you lost your first match. Were you going to – no, you said you were going – it was it was same spin, or did he have – It was the same spin uh, – dynam- it was dynamite against wind. Yeah. One of y'all were telling me about a combo that it was burst on less spin against your less spin. And I was thinking like, oh, it was, you know what? Uh, Mike used it for the same spin ruler against Papa Bay. Okay. I, that's the only time I got brought up today. Oh, okay. And you, and you won that one, right? Yeah, I won that one. Yeah. Cause I was thinking like, well, I could see that with the, with the rubber on it. Um, or just like just the way that it is designed and shaped. But I, yeah, I never thought of that either. Um, but that's one of the beauties that we do get to see with all these different regions come together because we'll see about it. Like in the WBO, we kind of see it. Well, we don't really see it on the winning combinations because a lot of people are using the same stuff. Um, unless you're 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 in regions that um, are exclusively creative. But I know when I look at a lot of WBBA or we talk to people up here, they'll be using combos and drivers that we would never use over here. Um, but I'm sure they have reasoning to why they play it. And at these big events, like you kind of get to see it, you know, cause we don't use burst here either. Um, I used it for a little bit, like when it first came out, cause I really just liked the way it looked, but then I stopped. Um, but I was only using it in right span. I never thought to use it in left. So that's pretty cool to, um, to get in to see that. Um, and then I think the issue with burst is just for all the WBO formats, there isn't really a place for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because you kind of, like, for most of the WBO formats, you want an opposite spin, left spin right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to use it for opposite spin, and Burst just doesn't fit the category for that. Solid. Solid. Like, maybe in um maybe in a BDR-less format. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's that possible. might see play in, but... Yeah. All right. And then... um. This is my last question for uh, BWC, unless y'all want to um, 
keep going on, but just like the finals for King of the Hill, how was your experience, Jared? So, um, unfortunately for the first round of uh, Top Cut, me and Beryuda got paired up against each other. Um, I wanted to see that match yeah, so like, bad. The, yeah. the thing with um, the way double elimination gets seeded when going to Top 8 just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But I, like, I don't think there's like a better way to do it, I guess. So what it did was... Everyone that didn't lose and made it in the top four, so half the bracket or top eight, so half of them just got randomly paired against like the bottom four because it challenge said we were all it was four people that were ranked first and then four people were ranked fifth, so just randomly seated or put these matchups together. So we, it just just so happened that us two got paired up against each other, and so that sucked. But then like randomly, like the f- top eight round was like. 5G WBBA in the DB stadium instead of like regular deck format. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know, like, I know Conte said the reason why he did it was he wanted to give a round to the people that were coming from non WBO regions, I guess. Mm-hmm. But the, the thing that didn't make sense to me was why, like, they, they would have to play a bunch of WBO format to even get to the finals to play that one round. Yeah. None of them made it. Like all the people that were from out of the country and stuff that don't play WBO, none of them made it in the top eight. It was all WBO players. So it was just a bunch of WBO players trying to figure out how to play 5G WBA on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah. but sh- shout out to Geetster and um, Bro Yido for doing a gentleman's agreement to not yeah. borrow a metal bearing drift from anybody. Oh, okay. Solid, both, solid. both of us had a way to get to get one. Like we could just borrowed it from Mike and Alan, and both had one, but we just said not to use it. Made okay. deck building a lot harder. That's um, what's so. That's what's so. The, the the weird thing was with our matchup, we literally had like mirror decks the whole way through. Oh yeah. So mm. like our the first match was my rightsman. It was like dynamite BDR against his world. He beats me. Then the next round. It's my world against his dynamite BDR, and then mm-hmm. we tied. And then the next round, it was my wind high extend plus against his uh, burst on metal drift. I somehow, by the grace of the Beyblade gods, <laughs> win this like unwinnable matchup by yeah. a mile. <laughs> I had no. I thought I was of the down two zero, and I'm like, my run's over. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. somehow I won this matchup, so it was one to one instead. And then we reverse the matchup, and he loses it, so I'm up to uh two one now. Mm-hmm. And then our final match was a vanish on bearing dash mirror, but I had over on mine, and he had tapered. I think that like made the difference. Mm-hmm. Dang man, yeah, you did not have an easy day, brother. And yeah. then Damn. like so, and then like after we played that one five G round, it was just WBO deck for the rest rest of the way. Okay. So, like, it was like I said, it was literally just that random round that they just forced you off of playing like a WBO format. It was just really odd, but so, yeah, I can it, see was, that. it is what it is. Like, it was just like so, super all, jarring. All, all, all in all, with the event though, like it was, it was fine. It was a very great event. Just maybe a little bit of tweaks on like the systems, and that's probably yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It just felt super jarring to like jump into this totally like unfamiliar format for like top eight out of nowhere yeah we're playing yeah. for a lot right now and it's like <laughs> we're both playing this super unfamiliar format luckily i've played like one tournament of 5g before because otherwise mm-hmm. i'd have no idea what i was doing yeah i can see yeah that's that's definitely tough because you're and like you said like no wbba player was in top eight right and no. Yeah, so it was, it was something different. It's something challenging. Um, fun. You got it overall, and then that's when I was watching. It was top four. It was Maryland versus was Maryland against North Carolina. North it was Carolina. Like perfect. Yeah, Maryland out. versus NC, and I was I was hype on that because I was like, you know, those is those are my um, the two regions that I played in the most, and definitely North Carolina. I was rooting for North Carolina. You know, that's my home. Um, but I wasn't. I wasn't like upset or extremely bummed when um 
when when Maryland won because you know a, a... he's saying he wasn't expecting North Carolina to win. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's definitely not what I was saying. I was I was saying I wasn't extremely bummed because um I got I got love for Jared and uh, I know Jagreus. Dr- I don't know him, but I know he's part of y'all scene. So got love for him too. It wasn't like all top four I knew of or had some relationship with top four. Um, because I, I know you, Jared, and then I know uh, Fireblader and um, Spike Storm. So I was rooting for North Carolina because that's my home and those are my guys. And the bumness I felt was more for my bum outness with them um, because I know that they, they were probably a little bit sad and bummed out. Uh, so I felt I felt sad in that aspect. But overall, it 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 went well. But dude, I thought um, I thought Fireblader was going to beat uh, Jagreus. I didn't get to see the match man I, I wish it was streamed so bad i really do um i was rooting for fireblader um I was rooting for spike storm too but i'm not gonna lie i, I, I wanted fireblader to take it all the way i was yelling out to my wife i was like oh we in there we about to do it this and that but still shout out to him he, he did really well um but yeah so you had you went against spike storm right yeah yeah how was that matchup um so his deck was um it was wind on metal bearing drift he had a dynamite on uh just a regular bdr and then he had world and left spin and then so like first pick like i've been i ran the same deck all day and like i said i literally never switched off my wind combo for the entire weekend unless they forced me to so i my first pick was wind and i think he picked his dynamite first and I won the outs. I got the outspin there, so it was one zero. And then he went to his win BDR, and I beat that one, or his MBD. I beat that, so it was two zero. And then he switches the his world combo. It was the last combo he had left. I just assumed he'd pick it. I wasn't gonna switch off though, just to mm-hmm. see how the matchup even went. Mm-hmm. I win that matchup too, and then I think it kind of like demoralized him because I mean I beat all three combos with one. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it feels was- like. It's such a huge mountain to climb when you're down 3-0 and you used every combo and you lost to lost. just one. Yeah, you know? no, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened with um me against Lionheart. Yeah. And um the what's it called? Dark Horseman. Yeah. Like I can he, see yeah. he went through all three he went through all three of his combos and he didn't even win with any of them. And you could just like you could just see it in his face that he's just like, What do I do? I mean, it's such a deficit to come back from, especially when you don't have an attacker in your deck at all. <laughs> like, uh-huh. it's yeah. difficult. And like he, like Spike Storm got one on me where he like pushed me out of the middle and I stalled out for the entire time, mm-hmm. and then I like died because I didn't have like any stamina left. So, mm-hmm. like he got yeah. the one on me, but then he goes, he picked the win, and instead of even, I didn't even want to like chance picking my world. Like, I think you're supposed to. I don't know how Mike would have played it. I just said screw it. I just kept picking my win combo. I'm like, if I lose again, maybe I'll switch off. I'm like, I'm pretty confident I'm just gonna win this matchup again. And then yeah. uh, it, we just played it two more times, and I won both. So it's five to one. Solid, solid. That sound that yeah, I could see because that's happened to me on on Spike Storms and to where like I've lost with all three, and I'm just like, all right, you know. So then I I, I do run attack, so I try to just stick with my attacker. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's, it is what it is. But shout out, that was a good matchup. And um, I know Spike Storm, I think, man, he, he has to, I think he's like 11 or something like that. So it was good that he even made it up there um, and he did his thing and he represented uh, pretty hardcore. And then for your finals matchup, you had. Uh, it was me and Drew Grayus playing. Yeah, yeah. So were you, did y'all know, did y'all have any gentlemen's agreement or y'all just went yeah, up Yeah, I mean, we, we yeah. just said we'll just play it like regular, you know. I mean, we, we played like the same deck. Yeah, I don't remember if I think he he was on dynamite instead of wind. That was like the big difference. I think his world was on a different disc. I can't remember to be honest. Um, but I like first pick he went guilty and I picked the the win combo. I was up a point. I I won the first point. I stuck, and then he he switched his dynamite to play like the same spin matchup. And like I got a random KO. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I got a random KO, and then I outspun him the third time. And I remember mm-hmm. that one. I thought I was about to lose it, but win always looks like it's about to lose, and then it doesn't. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. always looks like it was losing, <laughs> and then it just like beats dynamite. Like I know a lot of other regions say that 
Dynamite beats win wherever they play, but I do I, not think so. I I don't I never see that happen, and I'm like it's either it's either fifty fifty or it's like in wins favor a lot of the time. Yeah, and yeah. wind is like a lot better in opposite spin in my opinion than um than dynamite, dynamite. is because mm-hmm. I, I I didn't lose any opposite spin match. I played all day with that combo or all weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean I only played like two. I had the one pop of me match in like the first stage and then i had the one match of spike storm used his world against me Mm -hmm. so like i I was i'm pretty confident that combo was beating anything and wins like really good against like attackers too but yeah i was up 3-0 against dragreus and then like i don't know if it was just like the nerves got to him and he just like forgot to try or what but he just like never picked his world combo into my my thing once Mm mm-hmm and instead, he just basically uh, threw guilty in there and was just gonna try to run it, <laughs> run the whole yeah. match off the guilty, yeah. I guess. Because yeah. he didn't, he never he never tried his like opposite spin like world on drift once against my uh, win combo. Yeah, I think that was his biggest mistake. Like it, like it'd be one thing if he like tried it and lost again. Like, yeah, he, he never he never gave it a shot. So yeah. But the, the entire match, he never picked it, or did he pick ne- it and lost and it, never? No, Jared. Jared stayed on win the entire time, and Dragus just never even attempted to use world, which the whole purpose of the world is to counter that. Yeah, Some, sometimes it it yeah, I've had that to where it's. I won't say it's 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 not a brain fart. It's just like I'm down three and zero. Oh, if this world doesn't work. I'm gonna be down four yeah. now, and then it's like I, it, and then it's it's pretty much game over. So I've I've done that where I ran. I was like, let me just use my attacker yep. and hope for the best because if I use my attacker, I have a chance. It's it's kind of like the I I would have felt like it's kind of like the I have the same amount of chance. Like I may or may not win with my world, the way that this guy is sweeping this whole tournament with his win combo. Um, so I don't really know. But it, I probably have a better chance with just trying to KO him. And if I can get that or if I can get a burst, maybe it could swing in my favor and then I stick with this. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he's thinking, but still shout out to him for getting. I mean, burst. his launches weren't bad. He didn't self KO on any of them. Like it was mm-hmm. just wind just did its thing. I had like one round where he KO'd me and then uh, he's stuck on guilty again, which is, I, which is probably the right play. Um, but I just, I just ran wind again. I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep playing no. it. Not to mention though, this entire tournament WBO back wall rule was not there. Yep. So, but okay. I will, I I will say this: it didn't matter. You, I never mm-hmm. saw a matchup where a back wall like something hit the back wall and it bounced back in. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, all, all, all weekend, all day. Like, I didn't see it. I'm sure it happened at least once or twice, but it nowhere near happened enough to be significant. Yeah. So, like the back wall rule, we we we've never needed this rule. And yeah. I, th- I, I think having that rule really, like, changed how the mentality of the WBO players think. Mm-hmm. And I think that was kind of an issue, like, for WBO as a whole. So I'm hoping for X, we don't get that. Yeah. I don't have anything weird, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope X just stays with WB- WBBA or B4, as it's called now. Yeah. Um, on that, uh, did y'all have anything else for BWC? No, no. I mean, it was it was a crazy event. I mean, I don't think I'll ever. I mean, unless I go to Florida again and do something. I mean, I'll probably try to, but like nothing that I've played Beyblade wise has ever felt that big. Like, yeah, yeah. like that, man, oh that, my god, that event actually like rejuvenated Geetster on the game. Oh, it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't so. think I've been on the WBO as long as I have. Like. Like spending time looking at like what's getting posted in there, and so much until after this event. <laughs> yeah, be you, like you I put a ton of report it, up. I'll check it like, once oh. a month at the most. <laughs> I'm yeah. checking it like every day now. Like, yeah. like it's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was so much fun. That's what's so. And see that that's what we've been, we've all all of us like the amount of times we've done this podcast. We always talk about wanting to see things be more like Yu Gi Oh in the sense of. How, like big tournament structures go mm-hmm. and this is why yeah this is really why yeah. say, we've been missing the like big event for on the website for a while yeah like, i was never yeah. had that big event to look for 
I will say it again and, and shout out to Conse because um, I've said this. I know I've, I've talked to y'all about it. He does throw one hell of an event. Um, and that's, that is his thing. That's what he does. Cause I saw it the first time I went to Florida. Yeah. That was the first time I went to Florida it, uh, for Beyblade at least. And um, we was with the summer games and it was eye opening and it was nice and it was solid. So I imagine this one, even after a couple of years and even getting more um, recognition that this one was even bigger than that. And for him to have the main event, that main summer event, um, because I enjoyed Dark Continent. I, I had a lot of fun. I think the community came there, but I know with me, my style and um, the way I do things are more laid back. But when it comes to like that big main superstructure event, um, I know Kansei could put it together and do it. So a shout out for him to, for making that happen and bringing everybody together and revitalizing your, um, your, your love for the game, man. That's hundred percent solid. Uh, one more thing about like BWC before we like switch off of it or whatever. Like, no, yeah. I don't think I've seen an event where just like having a good mental has mattered so much for this game. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I'm watching people tilt out like after their first loss and then it's like, it just snowballs, you know, like, mm. like, <sighs> Especially in like our group, we had a lot of that happen where people would just were just tilting out. I'm like, you lost once. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You're not even out yet. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what, and and, and I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that's I think th that transcends beyond Beyblade. That's like any sport. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And and but to see it, it also in Beyblade and having a factor, it like kind of lets you know like people can say that this isn't. A sport and yeah it's probably not yeah you know it's not physically taxing um but mentally wrong wrong yeah it can it can get physically taxing when you do it Man. all day like that. ray buster yeah. was complaining about his arm being like shot like oh yeah day. okay okay oh yeah i'm wrong i'm wrong i don't know ray what he was doing but <laughs> Man. Yo, yo, ray buster test launch every time yeah. um yeah so he's like, yeah like like he 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 would battle and then after the battle, test launch. And he's not, like, light launching. He is full-on ripping the Beyblade. <laughs> so every time, he is full strength ripping that Beyblade, even for all of the test launches. So my man's arm was just shot. That shoulder's gone. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but it, it yeah, it, it is a sport. And having that that champion mentality is like, okay, yeah, I, do, I did get knocked down one time, but I got to get back up because if it gets into my head too much, I won't be able to make the right decisions. Um, I won't be able to get through this matchup. And it's like you said, and shout out to you again. That's why you are Hemothy, because you had those matches where you were 2-0, and or you had those matches where it's like, man, I should clearly win this. And then you were losing. It's like, man, I'm done. But you didn't let it get to you. I imagine you still stay cool, calm, and composed, and then you took the win he, over the entirety cool. of the event. You, he stayed, Yeah, he stayed cool. Yeah, I like that. I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Um, I mean, it was it was like people were just like making picks, and then they were just like, "You made your pick." Like, be confident about the pick you just made. You know, like, like even if it's the wrong one, like at least like you should know how to use all three combos in your deck against like whatever. Like, I like mm -hmm. I would hope so. So mm -hmm. it's like, well, yeah, that that was like against Raybuster round one. You know, I picked guilty. Like, yeah, it. It didn't affect me that I picked guilty. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I kicked myself in the ass later on, but that was just after I, you know, was already out of the tournament and had to rethink it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't during the tournament. During the tournament, I, you know, I got done. I was like, all right, cool. It's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Those things, these things, these things happen. But, yeah, shout out. Dang, man. Y'all have fun. Y'all have fun. Dang, you I wish I could been, watch. You should have been there, James. I should, I should have had. I should have had. Shoot. I know, I know if it goes down, um, and hopefully it will, uh, it goes down next year. Because I'm still, I'm having Challenger, but that's that's set up for the oh. regionals to be in March. Um, so it'll probably still like be the same thing we had this year. I'm just putting a title on uh, the little event that I'm running, and then hopefully next summer. Um, if he has it again, uh, I'll be able to shoot down there. Not even, not even concerned about like playing or anything like that, but just to be around um, everyone and and just the enjoyment of it. Um, 
Yeah, because it was, even though I wasn't there, like, communicating with y'all, communicating with uh, the Carolina Bladers on Discord and watching Challenge, um, I could kind of see it or see it in my head. Um, but, yeah, I know it's not the same. But, yeah, solid, solid. Um, but speaking on the rules and the back wall rule, I need y'all's help today because, um, like I said before we hopped on, there was the big announcement. I think this came this came out right before BWC. It was like a right? week before. Yep. Yeah. Right before BWC um, for rank play within the WBO. And I've been asked about it from hashtag Fafnir. That's our other organizer here on how we're going to run some things. And I've only... I looked over it. I skimmed through it. Um, we're able to rotation change now. We have... Um, finals no longer has to be only deck um is the back wall rule still a thing nope back wall rules it, it, it is a rank clause it's a rank clause that i think that was my um question or confusion with what rank clauses mean granted i did not dive too deeply into this as well as um yeah we have some bands so it looks like just from the outside looking in and what I skimmed over, it looks like they incorporated the limited format that uh, you had came up with and that Think had put together uh, as the proposal. Um, and they threw it in to this as rank clauses and much more is sure. what it says. So what, what are the big changes within this? What is it, how is it going to affect organizers within the WBO? How is it going to affect our rank structure? And I'm I'm a complete newbie coming in coming in. I just got my organizer. Well, not complete newbie. I was organizing. I took a three month break. Now I'm back. How do I run my tournaments? I guess that's what I'm trying to ask. Oh, uh, that, that that's the thing. <laughs> These rank clauses make it so it's up to you what you want to do. As long as oh, it's yeah. in the parameters of what they've set that that you can change, you can change it. So. Okay, so basically when you when you read it now, WBO, the base rule structures of all the different games is basically WBBA. Mm -hmm. So if you just say, I'm going to host a tournament, you, you know, just like before you decide the format and the stadium, and then you choose your battle format. Or, yeah, yeah, you, you, choo you, you choose what, you know, if say it's, we're just going to say burst standard. So you say, okay, we're playing burst standard. We're playing in the standard stadium. Okay. And then you pick three on three as your base. Like, cause that's like probably the most played format, I think, for, um, mm -hmm. first standard. Mm -hmm. You choose that. So basically now you're playing WBBA in the standard stadium. Okay. That's, that's all it is. Um, you have rotation changing available, but you can only have one Beyblade that can ever have the option of doing it. Um, and, you know, so then there are rank clauses. The rank okay. clauses you put them into the um into the thread so that way then like when it's being approved they can read it and be like, Okay, this this is within the parameters, we can approve it. Um they you can then change certain things. Like say you don't want to deal with BDR or drift at all. You can make a rank clause banning banning them. Um okay. say you don't want people to be allowed to rotation change put in a clause saying the rotation changing. Uh, say you want attack to be a little stronger so you can allow the back wall rule to be viable, to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's basically what it is. It's, ba it's basically we're now WBBA with the ability to adjust your tournament in any way to be like the uh, older WBO tournament. Okay. So it's like, it's, it's essentially the organizer has complete freedom to play yeah. in a just as long as it's in an organized organized way. I I I like it. I I do. I um I do yeah, I do like it. Yeah. I like the the option that you have banned. Is it only specific drivers you can ban or you can you just ban and, just like No, it's only specific drivers. They, okay. they they have a list of the um drivers that are and stuff that is able to be banned or unbanned within four. Okay. That's still sweet, yeah. That way, nobody's going crazy, or no organizer is just trying to ban everything that they can't play against. Um, and that's solid. Uh, my the concern that 
we had in our region was just for if we were going to run deck with that rotation changing bay. Oh, you can't. Yeah, um, that got changed. That got okay. that got fixed. That got fixed because because uh, initially it said that the three formats that could do rotation changing was three on three five G and WBO deck, mm-hmm. and I brought up a whole thing in the Discord about it, and um when think. I guess finally read what the whole debate was because there was a couple people debating about me. It should be fine. And I think they weren't understanding the rules because um, they were reading that during Beyblade selection phase, Beyblade selection phase is when you first come up to the stadium and you reveal what Beyblade you have brought. You can't change them. Right. Mm-hmm. That's Beyblade selection phase, not during the battle when you can do mode changing and stuff like that. So yeah. they, they, they were thinking that, you know, you could only rotate change once you brought the Beyblades up or before you revealed it to your opponent. I'm like, no, that that's not when a mode change happens. Spin direction yeah. changing is a mode change. Yeah. Um so but once once it was a little more cleared up and people were like, wait a minute, then why why is deck format allowed to do that? Because deck because pick three choose one, you're not allowed to do it. But deck mm-hmm. format is literally pick three choose one with an added step. Yep. Like so if and... I'm playing if I'm playing deck format and I can rotation change, I'm never coming off the rotation change. Yeah. Like, you stick, stick with world. Yeah, I will literally sit on world the entire time. You, 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 you I, I know the big argument. Oh, they'll just use attack to counter it. If I'm the opposite spin, yes, you can KO me at like a 50% chance, but it is not guaranteed to happen. I guarantee you to get the five points, I will still get the five points more with world than you will with your um, guilty or your ultimate. Yeah, because at, in the end, you have a higher percentage to do so. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, okay. I'm glad that was done because I I had brought that up when it, when the I think the infinite or uh, that proposal had came up, and um I think the kind of argument was like, well, it just it's just freedom. If people want to do it, they can. Because I was like, man, I don't really but see that, agree that, with that, that, but it is some freedom. But it's like, but see, that's yeah. a problem with like some of the rotation clauses, like and how they work. You don't have entire freedom. Like, I don't know how you would do a rotation clause because there, there isn't, like, a specific one that allows you to change rules for your um, finals format if you want to do a separate format than your um, uh, for, uh, first stage format. So, like, if you were, like, we're going to play three on three and then go to WBO deck, mm-hmm. but if you wanted to not allow rotation changing in deck, you also have to not allow it in three. Okay, but rotation change is not allowed in deck, right? Or right. you have the option right. to. Okay. Right. Rotation changing is not allowed in deck. So if you switch to that format, it's already it's not allowed. Okay. So you yeah, so you don't have to have a clause in there for that then. Right. You won't okay. need a clause for anything. Well, um I think I'm going to just ask my community what they want to do cuz I know uh I know. Well, there's a couple of things running through my head. It's our interview with Beyblader 101 and how he was saying that deck format was our structure, that that was our rank structure. Um, but I think now, and as I look at this event, or I've been feeling like this for a while, I'm not as concerned with rank. I know it means something, but it's also like the enjoyment of the game. And also when you go to this big event, like a big event, which I just went to BWC, um, I know... I, I I would say like I was bummed out or thinking different ways about oh it's not ranked and things like that. But at the same time, it was like it was so much fun, and so much of an accomplishment because you were still there with a lot of skilled bladers. So ranking all that stuff kind of just went out the window, and it was like who can play the best. And you really got to see that. So I'm not as I don't think I'm as heavy so more so much on that. Um, everyone plays the same. Um, I I know I'm not because even when I did the challenger i was like you know people are at freedom to do what they want but uh do y'all think y'all still going to be running that because i know i'm gonna ask my community do we want to run 3v3 all the way through do we want to run 5g all the way through do we want to switch it up and we may switch it up every here and there but how y'all think y'all gonna handle it uh not play baby burst yeah we're gonna be playing x so like (laughs) Like, cause all, cause all the clauses and everything right now are only for Beyblade Burst. Like, I'm gonna host one more tournament next week, and mm-hmm. we're like, just because we didn't, we haven't got to do it as a ranked format, we're just doing basically WBBA 5G in the standard stadium all the way through. 
Okay. That's 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 literally what the tournament next week that I'm having is. And that's gonna be the last kind of like hoorah for birth for Maryland. Okay. So y'all going straight to X in August then. Yeah, because what um me me, me what the group has decided, um, like our inner group, um, I'm gonna get one extra of the triple set, and I think Alan is going to get one extra of the triple set. And we're literally just going to bring them as a three on three deck for anyone that doesn't have X, they're still able to come and play and get to try out the system and play. Yeah, and they can mix and match because none of those parts are the same, right? Nope. No, none of those parts are the same. So Yeah. Yeah, man. And then yeah. um I, I I just I just figured that's gonna be like the simplest way to transition into X for um our area. Just provide the stuff so everyone can play and just go from there. Yeah, I think I think with this though, um it to me this is like a telltale on what the WBO how they're gonna handle X. It's gonna be like this is for bursts. They might see how it's working and then come out and be like, hey, we're gonna do the same thing for X. So essentially we'll be able to play that the B4 type format. Or if you still want to have your back wall KO rules for your region if they like it like that. Or um any other thing, depending on because it, it gave them lead way to see how the gameplay is, because maybe there's things that we haven't seen from Japan that some issues that we may run into. So it also gives them a little bit of a buffer to be like, hey, we can throw this in there now, or different regions have the option to change and modify things as they see fit. Um, so I think it was a good, it was a good decision, a smart decision made on their part, at least from what I'm understanding of it now. Um, I know we're going to play Burst at the end of July, our tournament. And as long as, um, we had the product in, I know I'm going to bring some of my ex stuff and just play around with some of the guys and gals that are come to see how it is. And then I don't know if we're going to transition in August or when, because a lot of feedback I've been getting from the community, um, We've had a lot of new players, and they really like Burst. Um, I've been telling them, I'm like, man, don't probably don't spend all your money or, or try to heavily invest in the Burst because we're pro- I'm probably more than likely going to just transition to X because yeah, that's the next thing. That, but, that, that's the unfortunate thing. Like, you really just kind of have to transition straight into X. Yeah. Like, especially, like, if you want to be able to keep up with it. Because, I mean, I know for us, James, like, me and you, this is the first time we're going through a transition. A transition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that made me think, too, because we have uh, various listeners. What went on? Because I don't play it, and Mike, I, I know you don't play it either. What were the big changes or the big uh, impacts for Metal Fight and Classic that you saw, Jared? Is that Were those changes solid or no? Um. So there was, like, a couple changes that were like just added there weren't even like clauses um for metal fight they i don't think they really matter too much um the one there's like stuff with like metal faces that i don't really like but in the end it don't, i don't think it matters too much if yeah. you own the stuff to, to use three of the same metal face in your deck it's way it's super crazy but um <laughs> yeah did the metal faces do they have how was it before did you only get to have like you only got to use one version of each. So there's two different versions of metal faces and then like the one type of metal face is like four different like variations. But mm-hmm. if it's like any other part for your deck, you can only use one of like each. But now you don't now you can just use as many as you want. Okay. Um okay. I haven't played classic in a while. But I mean like from what I've seen, like most people are just gonna end up banning like using every single clause that bans like stuff. Because mm-hmm. um, no one like wants to play with this stuff, and like it's like it's weird. I don't know how I totally feel about this stuff. I like the idea, but um, I don't know how much I like having the entire player base like be able to just pick and choose whatever ban list they want to use. Yeah, especially yeah. when they want to like still have like stuff be ranked yeah. points and stuff. That's that's the one of the issues I see with like the whole clauses thing. I like what it does for like individual communities, but um when it comes to the rank, scheme of the rank, yeah. yeah. It just yeah. seems awkward that like one region could be playing without drift the whole time while the other one is and it's like why are these points count the same? It's yeah. like it's one thing yeah. when it's like totally different formats. I know a lot of people don't like 
um, having like burst classic and burst standard count towards the same thing. But like now it's even worse because now it's like you'll have two regions only playing standard, but they're playing it completely differently. But it's mm-hmm. all counting the same as well. So it's like yeah. what what actually matters, you know? Yeah, I think from on on that view, I think like how rank might be looked at, like whether they reset it or just because with this, I can see them just combining it all. Like there's no difference whether you're playing classic, metal fight, plastics, burst standard, baby late axe, because with all these variations, ranked may just come to a thing um, to where it's like, who's just playing Beyblade the most, who's consistently winning in whatever format they're playing. And then, um, we have our, the, the world tournament or the nationals that decides like who is the most, who is the best for that year, um, overall from the various ways that that we've all played. Yeah. I do see rank, um, dying down a little bit within the community. I think it'd be something fun to look at some fun to be cool, but then it's like, what, like, you may be number one and number two is whoever, but y'all have never played the same way ever. And when you meet each other, y'all are losing, both losing to rank number 200 because of the format that you have to play when you do meet. So, yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah, but I think um, overall, I mean, I think it's it's like what you said, and I'm glad like you got revitalized. It's the joy that we have with this sport and um, the sport in this game, whether you're organizing, um, judging, playing, playing your heart out, uh, bringing the community together and just having fun. Like I said, I recently just got back into, um, I started playing the One Piece trading card game. And um, it reminded me, like it brought me that nostalgia that I had when I was younger with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I don't think I'm, I definitely don't think I'm going to host any of those tournaments because I just want to have the, the joy of playing. Um, but with that, and when it comes in, it is just that, I guess just that, that feeling of that competition within the, within the nerd life. And I think that's what we all strive for. And all of us may just love playing at locals. Uh, some of us might like going to regionals. Some of us want to go to nationals. Some of us may even have the dream to go to worlds, but we have that option now. And within those trading card games um that is a big difference that we have with um um beyblade or at least within a wbo because tcgs as far as y'all know there's no rank in that right nope no nah, you just you just going and you're just playing and whoever's the best for that day is the best for that day and you go to worlds and then you're the best um and i could see maybe the wbo transitioning to that because that's how the wbba is or and we have rank there for the people that want it like it, and appreciate it but at the end of the day who's going to win the big tournament who's going to win who's winning out all their locals who's winning out all their regionals and things like that so yeah i i have i have a feeling that um especially considering like how tt is now trying to do like this gear sport stuff and everything mm-hmm. like uh, WBO will probably be looking at that as maybe that is just the future of Beyblade. It's trying to be more competitive and having, you know, like net regional and national tournaments. Mm-hmm. So like, like e- even even if let's say TT, you know, they're just blowing smoke up everyone and they don't really make it a sport or anything. It's they're just using it for advertisement, mm-hmm. and you know, eventually all we still have is the WBO. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if that if that's the case, WBO can just start taking the idea that the Karatomi laid out, which is the same idea that TCGs have and already have laid out in front of us. Obviously, my BB is an issue for the website. Mm-hmm. Obviously, trying to have these ranks is becoming more of an issue on keeping the website maintained than is needed. Yeah, like like in all, in all reality. The website would run just fine if we did, like, even with my BB, if we just got rid of the ranking system and just had it as a form site where you post tournaments and go play in tournaments. Dude, you know how, how, like, I'm just thinking about it now. It would be so much easier on everyone. Shoot, I just forgot. I need to process my last tournament. I haven't even done that. But that's the thing, too. It's, it's like, I, I completely forgot. Um, I think my two weeks is coming up this Sunday. But, um, 
it's less work on the organizers, which honestly, I don't know if you enjoy doing the spreadsheet and all that, but it's something that I kind of like, hey, man, I don't feel like doing this. But if we were able to come to a tournament, to have the challenge link, to post that up, post up the winning combos, I'm good with that. You know, it's like, hey, you see the challenge link, you see the, the tournament that they had. Um, people aren't getting super bummed or, or, or pissed off because their points are going down a little bit. They just come and we play. If there are any disputes, you know, they can send up the video footage and things like that because um, hopefully we'll still be able to have prizes. But even if we don't, like, we can still play. Um, I'm I mean, honestly, if nothing was ranked, I wouldn't have winning combos or anything anyway. I would just yeah. I, like literally, literally at that point there, the forums would just be like a place to talk. And if you if you won your local tournament and you want to share what you played, just make a form and show it. Yeah, or start a YouTube like, channel and yeah. talk about yeah, because that's I mean that's what that's what like like I said, just got back into trading cards. Um. So, and people sharing their decks, like when they do that, like that gets a lot of views because it's hard to find these. Um, it's hard to find like what to play unless you're going out and playing. Uh, and, so you are, yeah. The, the thing with trading card games is like even watching like local deck profiles isn't a terrible idea because mm -hmm. you start like, especially with like TCGs where like you find that someone there is playing like a really niche card. And it mm -hmm. ends up being super good, and you just no one realized. Yep, yep, and that's the beauty of it. And then they go to their regionals or wherever, and then it's like, oh shoot, man, I never even thought of that, and um, or I've never even they didn't nobody prepare for it. That is a a downside sometimes when we do always putting up the um winning combos. Yes, it's great. So new players coming in can get some knowledge and 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 gain some things. But at the same time, it's like, well, everyone's going to be they either going to know what i'm playing because i've been running the same thing for the past few months or they're going to be copying what i'm playing versus um you just having your locals and i think that's a better focus and especially right now i would say the wbo is at an all-time high right now because of bwc and because of this new and the new rollings that we have and i think that's feedback to the staff to be like you know what rank did matter but maybe it doesn't matter as much because like like I said, I was feeling a certain way. There's like, man, BWC's not ranked or this and that. I was like, I wonder. But Geister, you said it. Mike, I know you had a lot of fun. I was super hype on it. It wasn't a ranked event, but it was like one of the biggest events. And I even said it like, yeah, it wasn't. Everyone was not playing on the same, um, playing the same formats like worldwide or this and that. But you had people from all over the world who play Beyblade, who have knowledge and skill on it. So to win that tournament, and everyone, everyone was on an equal playing ground because somebody, everyone that day played something they had never played before. And they used their skill and um, their competitive drive, focus, and things like that to get I through mean, the tournament. It, so it, it, it wasn't really even for the WBBA players. <laughs> yeah. They, what, had, what, they, what, they, had to, they had to play like six or seven rounds of a format they don't know, and it's only double elimination. Like, yeah, that is facts. That is facts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like that. Like that's one. That, that's one of the other reasons why I'm saying like Swiss probably would have been better, just because like, if if it would have took two rounds for the WBBA players to kind of actually like get down the format, and then they would have won out, they still potentially could have made it in. Made it in top cut. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. if they if if they would if they would have started out like o two. But then one out, they potentially still could have made it in the top of the place. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it could be. Well, maybe even if we adapt or adopt for the big world event, that is something that is neutral and that everyone can play, which the first thing that comes to my mind is 3v3. 3v3 is something that is extremely neutral well, because everyone plays. Well, Beyblade X is supposed to be played at three on three. Yeah. It is supposed to be played three on three, first of four points, burst and KOs are two, outspins are one, extreme finishes are three. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 know, I know WBO. I know how we are. Some people are going to complain that it's only the four points and one thing is worth three. I mean, let's be real. It's only worth, right now, currently, it's three points and it's are worth two. But you yeah. don't see people complaining. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. the same thing. 
It's the same yeah. thing. What, I, what I've noticed, and and yeah, just like you said, the community, and I've been guilty of it too. It's like just a lot of complaining, but it's like, dude, just like just play the game as a set forth. I've seen a meme. I can't remember if I mentioned up here before. Like if chess was made today, people would be like, nerf the queen. She's yeah. too OP or whatever. Um, but it's like, dude, it's 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 the way the game is played. So just play it. Like yeah. it's kind of like a get good and and then just have fun or try to your best to have fun well, um well see that's where i want to point out like look n- we we didn't play the way wbba played burst and now at the end of burst we finally was re- like reverted it to where our standard format of the game is wbba and we yeah. have to make rank clauses to play the other versions of the game that we the wbo have created like that's just that's just telling you that like the way w, the way Takara Tomi has made the game fits the toys. Just just play it that way. It know? does. It does. I think it's a smaller community focus. Not saying WBO is a smaller community, but compared to the vastness of WBBA, um, it was just that focus on some things that smaller regions have wanted. But now it's like so many people are playing, so many people are involved. We need that organized structure. And I do feel like Takara Tomi, um, has put in a little bit of that leg work a little bit of time, especially with the vast communities that they cater to, to um, right. understand like how it should be played. And that's just, that just, I don't know. Yeah, man, that just is what it is. And yeah, uh, like, like with, with X coming, if we want to have X as ranked for WBO, like right, right now, the burst rank doesn't matter anymore. Honestly, the metal fight rank, there's no plastic rank but if we're gonna rank x right here from the start we have to decide on you know these are the rules and if the rules happen to be the b4 rules if we decide we're just gonna go with the b4 rules then that's it only yeah. have b4 rules ranked and you play straight through the way any wbba b4 tournament would be yeah and just um... leave it just don't don't mess with it. Just leave it. If Takara Tomi for some reason says, "Hey, you know, in you know B four tournaments or in any type of G tournament, this part is banned because they create a part that's so good." Okay, ban the part here. If Takara yeah. Tomi even says it's it's worth to be banned, it's worth to be banned. Just ban. Yeah, and you got to look their feedback. They're not just getting feedback. Like WBO is getting feedback from the. Like from Maryland, from North Carolina, from Florida, Canada, and we get, Cali. we get a lot of our feedback from people that are just playing in their rooms with themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got, uh, it's true. It was, it was. It was funny. It was, it was just funny the way. It was funny the way that you said it. But that's what it is. They're just they're sitting in their be- in their bedroom. Playing Beyblade, and they're like, yeah. let me get on the WBO. This combo is broken. Oh my yeah. God, ban the parts. And then yeah. they take it, and then someone is like, oh, this this thing's broken. I'm going to take it to a tournament. And they get raffle stomped, and they're like, this yeah. thing sucks. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, what well, I'm saying, we get typically our feedback just from our location within North America. Um, cause it is the World Beyblade Organization, but we just have it from North America and Australia. Uh, so the Western, like the Western Hemisphere, um, but TT is catering to a uh, majority, if not all, of like the Asian countries and, and the Eastern world. And um, even though they have their different ways that they play, um, various regions, they do have, you know, their band list, but they have that, um, that typically that same organized format. Uh, so we do need to take some guidance on that. I did want to, and I don't, I don't know him or her. Um, I haven't talked to them, but I I know I have um, you know made comments on staff and like in production and in time and things like that. But I wanted to shout out because uh, we always shout out Shen Dog and shout out Zector. Um, I think think he 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 puts in into a lot of time too. But Dan, uh, because I know I wanted to shout out Dan specifically because I can't remember when he became a member of the staff and like I said I, I don't really know um, them as a person. But I do see a lot of the work and, and the input from um, him or her. And I know that he he ran, 
I, do y'all know if it's male or female? I guess it don't matter. They ran uh 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 Beyblade North, right? Dan. Dan. I, I wouldn't know. I yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> I think I think they did it. I hosted it to put it together. Re- regardless, they're putting a lot of time and effort into uh Beyblade as well as the WBO. And I wanted to shout that out because I know it sounds like I just speak on me like um bashing staff or, or the progression and things like that, but I do like that. But back on to the ranked, I honestly would just like to see it like even if they keep it, like go away with the diversity because it at this point in time, especially with the rank, the rank clauses with um burst, like I don't really see a point in having even rank for X, but that's only in in the thought of having the World Cup because the rank, I feel like rank matters when you're playing your locals, you're playing like regionals and things like that. When everyone is not getting together to really see who is on top for that year or that season. But if you have that year or that season to where everyone is coming together, no matter how many times they play, no matter where they're placing at, and everyone's coming to show their skill, um, whether they're getting invitations or um, got to do a play-ins or anything like that to come, like that is the ultimate test to see like who is the king or queen, emperor or whatever for that year. And that outweighs rank, in my opinion. But I mean, I, at this point, if if you let organizers do whatever they want with the stuff within reason i guess because they can't do like anything they have to stay within those clauses um i feel like it's better just to like get rid of ranked at this point like yeah i'm tired of spreadsheets (laughs) (laughs) i just feel like i just feel like it ends up breaking more than it breaks the website more than what it's worth yeah 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 i mean like I've had, I mean, I I don't know if I've ever mentioned, like, what, like, me and, like, Sniper call, like, the great wait for the rest of the group. Great wait! The ranks literally didn't get updated for two years. Mm -hmm. Like, we still played that entire time. It didn't matter that much, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, we could definitely go without playing it. It's, like, nice to see who's, like, doing well or whatever, but, I mean, if you just, like, keep up with who's winning tournaments, like, you'll know anyway. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I feel like I would at least like to see winning combos get updated still, just for that, just so you can like find it easier. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, like, well, I mean, what, what, what I think they should definitely do is I think they need to separate the winning combo thread into a couple different ones, one for like each different format. You know what I mean? That way, then like you're not scrolling through and you're like, oh, well, what are the latest burst standard combos? And yeah. you're going through classic and metal fight combos as well. Yeah. Yeah, I also think it just shouldn't be moved to Beyblade customization. I don't know why it's in general. I've never understood that, but yeah, I mean it's not I, the biggest deal. Shoot, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind doing that. I really, I, I'd much rather, even if I had to split them up into different threads, than to do this spreadsheet. I'm sorry, I am wonderful. I have, I do not like doing the spreadsheet. I know I'm being real negative on that, but if any way we could not do the spreadsheet and we could just go and play, or shoot, I ain't even got to play. If I could just host. And be like, hey, you're the winner. Here's your prize. See you next month. I'll be happy. Um, yeah, that just is what it is. Did y'all have anything else on the on the uh on the rules or any any clauses that I, I missed or overlooked or that I missed or overlooked? Um, I don't think so. No, I'm I'm pretty I good. I think we went over all the ones that were like big. Yeah. Like yeah. but like I said, I think it's like fine. It's just makes ranked tournaments kind of weird but like mm-hmm. if we just stop having stuff be ranked or just get rid of the rank system in general like you know you don't get to say you're the best unless you go to that big tournament i guess but the rank system makes no sense no one knows how the points get calculated anyway so i don't think it would matter yeah yeah that's straight from the words that's straight from himothy y'all you can't say you're the best <laughs> until saying, you want I- it all <laughs> I, I'm up there in the rankings. I literally don't know how or why I get or lose points depending on who I beat or whatever. I just know mm-hmm. that the majority of the time, if I lose, I'm losing a bunch. So yeah. <laughs> that, that's all I know at this point. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why I'm losing so many. I just know that I am. 
So yeah. I just have to accept it. So it's just like really awkward. It's, it gets to the point where it's really hard to grind up. If especially yeah. like if you're in a region that doesn't have a lot of points in it, like us in Maryland, yeah. we're lucky. Like you have you literally have to live in Maryland or play a lot in Maryland or like maybe Canada to like have a chance to climb the rankings like in a reasonable amount of time. Mm-hmm. Like you can be way better than your rank says. Yeah. Like, just because of where you play. And that's and that's uh another thing. I think I'm I'm sure we brought up before, but it's a the rank is a another added uh uh it's an unnecessary stressor. You I know? mean like like literally I think most of the top eight for BWC, like their rank isn't like that crazy, you know. I think I was the only yeah. one that was like big. I mean most of the other for big and you. Yeah. Like yeah. Armor one Dark Horseman and then got top eight in BWC. My man's Bay rank is like twelve hundred points. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that's nothing when you look at the rankings. A hundred percent. And I've 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 mentioned that and spoke on that. And plus, it's like even though, like I said, it 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 is great that you got to go to BWC, and in the back of your mind, you're not like God. I hope I don't lose this because I'm gonna drop down to whatever spot. That does that needs to be the last thought that you have. Um, and I'm not saying like, Oh, you don't need to think about that because shoot, I think about it. Every, everyone will think about it. Um, when it comes, but that it's an unnecessary stressor instead of you just going like, dude, I just need to give the best performance I can and try to win. Like the only, the only thing that ranking is good for is like, it helps organizers when they're making like certain tournament structures, like, like uh block run Robins, especially. Yeah. Cause like, it's a lot easier to just go down the list and go, one two one two one two but like if you're an organizer especially if you're experienced and you play like you host a lot in your area you should be able to make like even blocks you know yeah like, you you know not to put all the good players in one and put all the other players in another one like mm-hmm. you know to even it out yeah and, you'll, you'll you'll know who your top players are yeah. when they come and if you got new people coming um, I say they don't matter, but not in a negative way. It doesn't matter necessarily where you place them as long as it's even. Because if they yep. come and they're and they're uh, OP or like just godly at the game, I mean that just is what it is. They're still yeah. new. It's the first time you've seen them. So, yep. Like, like if you're an organizer, you should do that. And like Swiss can honestly be randomized and it'll work just fine. Um, like. I guess yeah. you'd have issues with like double elim and stuff, but that gets ran so little. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. so little. And like the organizer could do the same thing still. They could theoretically just come up with who they think the first seed is for the tournament and whatnot and go down the list or find some random way to decide it, I guess, just to, for seeding, mm-hmm. just for like a double elimination tournament. Like something for BWC. Like if somebody wanted to sit down and like have the full, like it would be easy because I mean there's a lot of people that didn't show up. But like if you, let's say Conse had his like initial list of people that bought tickets, mm-hmm. and he just wanted to assign everyone a rank from one to whatever the bottom number was. Like they could he could have did it. Yeah. Like yeah. Like I, can I ask this? And I know I'm I'm not. I know TCG is way different, but there is there isn't a break. Like they don't have rank. Everybody's just coming and playing, right? Yep. No, I mean like Swiss brackets are literally just random in the game. Like, yeah. It, like for stuff like nationals and stuff, you never see like big players play super early because there's just so many other players you could get paired up against. Mm-hmm. Like for for like local stuff where it's like ten people, like yeah, you'll play like the two best players in the room play round one sometimes. It just happens. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's just all random. But it, it like it still works. Yeah, yeah, it's and like with like, a format like it, Swiss, like you can lose once and it's like totally fine. You just keep playing the rest of the day. Like, yeah, that that that's the, that's the big issue when you get into like double limb and whatnot with a big enough tournament like this. Like, you you just because you lost like once or twice doesn't mean you should be completely out. Yeah, you know. I think yeah, the, and and I understand that because it was like it, it is a long travel, and then you go. And you're done in the main event after two matches. Um, yeah. And I think even, yeah, or even if we didn't, even if we didn't see the double a limb, I think that the multiple groups of Swiss 
would be beneficial because you could um within swiss you could shuffle that and it wouldn't be as bad because you still are having at least five rounds yeah yeah like that that could also be another way you do it you just start splitting stuff off in the blocks of swiss i mean you'd also still have to try to make those kind of even like you don't want all the good players in one swiss bracket but i mean Mm -hmm. yeah because i think now that i think about it i think like because i i play league um that's one of the other biggest i play league chess beyblade and now one piece so um but in all the other games there are blocks because you have well with league there's the different we have your ranked uh, uh, yeah they, they, and stuff. Mm-hmm. and they, but you, you have your block it's like a b c or d and you just play against the people within there and then you advance out of that yeah. um there is some seeding with that. It's not like completely random, but some of it is random. Like they draw names out of a hat. Um, and it's like, okay, the best, the, there's the the top four players will be split into their group. And then everyone else is just thrown into those groups. Um, and that just is what it is. Like, yeah, sometimes it sucks, but then there's also some underdog stories to where the team that, everyone thought that was going to lose or the player everyone thought was going to lose instantly ends up upsetting because they win their overall group and then they come and win the overall tournament. It'd be like, like that. Like I'll, be, I'll be 100% honest. Out of our group, I never expected Dragreus to get as far as he did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm agreeing with you like I knew. I don't know. Shoot. He, he's probably <laughs> but what I understand. Like I, I, I never seen him play, but. Um, Jared knows. I, Jared knows. Yeah, I yeah. literally said it too. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but that, but that, that's the thing. You know, sometimes it's just based on who you ended up playing throughout. Yeah, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. But it's like, I guess a hundred percent of the time you have to try. You, you, you bring your A game. Um, and I know y'all did. I'm not like shot, um, shutting it down. But no, it I just. Don't. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's just like that sometimes. And also it was, even though it was pick three, choose one, it was essentially single bay. Um, For me, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else switching stuff. I didn't. Yeah. It was yeah, single it was, bay uh, me all day. Single bay all day. And, um, but yeah, but overall, um, uh, yeah, I was going to, I'm about to close it out, but did y'all have any other topics? No, nah, I think we got through yeah. everything. All right, that was pretty good. Yeah, I think overall, man, I'm I'm happy. Thank you all for for both hopping up here. Um, I know Mike, you're up here with me. Um, every week, almost every week. Uh, thank you once again, Jared, and major shout out to you, man. That was a big accomplishment. Um, I know people are looking forward to this episode because I was looking forward to this episode because I wanted to hear everything that happened. I didn't yeah, really. I was too. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I told Mike, I'm like, so are we doing the podcast Tuesday, like when we get back, or what? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. James, James said Saturday. I'm like, man. Yeah, yeah Saturday. Yeah. Like, you, you know <laughs> what's funny about that? Because I, I like, I, I, I messaged Mike, and I was like, we'll, we'll do it Saturday because I was thinking about y'all, like, wanting to get back and decompress because I wanted to call him that night and be like, dude, let's just do it now and let's do it tomorrow. Like, I got time. <laughs> Jared um, would have been down. <laughs> I would have been down. I, I swear, I, I was like, oh, man, Jared, because I know sometimes it's, um, I always think about football season because I know it's like Sundays I can't do it. Friday nights he's playing UBO. Yep. So I was like, let's do – we'll just do Saturday because – and then I, I don't know if you're still in school or not. It's summertime. Not right but, now. Yeah, 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 not right now. Yeah, I was like, uh, he, he's probably going to say no, so let me just wait. No, I'll just wait. But I've been I've been itching to get up here. Um, Yeah, JC, uh, he was the same way. He's like, man, I'll do, well, y- when y'all going to do it? Like, like this and that. And so <laughs> – I know people people are ready to um hear and, and I'm hype about it, man. Shout out to Maryland, shout out to uh uh North Carolina guys that came out, shout out to the whole Beyblade community. Um Florida, um uh, you know, Beyblade Premier putting it all together. Um um did anybody from yeah, Cali came, Washington. Did, was Ch- anyone from Chile there? There might have been, but I, if they I were, honestly, I don't I was know. Some attention. People. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the whole Beyblade community. Texas, Jersey, Papa Bay. All y'all. Papa Bay, Philippines. Came out here and did his thing. Literally flew across the world um, to have these have these tough matches. Now you can go back home and then say that, hey, we're not, we not scrubs over here. He if takes what he wants. 100%. Yeah. All right. Um, I was thank saying, you well, all. Like, 
Oh, go ahead. If, if, if anyone wants to, like, if they haven't already, like, read my tournament report, if they want, like, I went into, like, crazy detail in, like, every round okay. I played. So if people are, like, really interested, like, mm-hmm. just read the tournament report. It's right there. Yeah, but, I'll I mean, put it in the link in the description yeah, below. You can get descript- I can send you a link, but. I got it. I yeah. mean, I had it yeah, pulled up. Say, I was literally, not. I have, like, very detailed, like, <laughs> descriptions of everything that happened during the weekend. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, shows, that shows to the hypeness because – Jared don't even be up there writing. He no, don't talk. I have like 300 there. posts of my name, and I've been on the website for 11, like 12 years now. So. Yeah, I, I, I have more than him, and I've been on the website for three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout, sh- shout out to uh to Maryland because we're we're number one. Y'all are number one, number one two years in a row, and North Carolina's trailing behind, but we're gonna get it one year. I swear. One yeah, year. one year we're gonna get it. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats to y'all. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, whole Beyblade community, for listening to it and showing the support that you have um, on the channel, on the show. Um, yeah, continue to tune in. Uh, we'll be back hopefully again next weekend. Either just to open discussion or response. I, I would like to interview Armor. Um, I'll probably reach out to Sniper. We need to do Sniper's part two again because it got cut off. Um, but yeah, <laughs> on, on another note. At this yeah. point, we'll just redo snipers. Yeah, we'll redo snipers. Snipers interview. Um, but yeah, shout out to everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and take care. Peace.